Hi, my name is Ashish and in this video, we will talk about configuring anti-spam policies in Exchange Online Protection. What exactly we mean by anti-spam protection? To help reduce junk email, Exchange Online in includes junk email protection that uses proprietary spam filtering, also known as content filtering technologies to identify and separate junk email from legitimate email. Exchange online protection spam filtering learns from known spam and phishing threats and use the feedback from the consumer platform Outlook.com. Ongoing feedback from admins and users help ensure that the EOP technologies are continually trained and improved. EOP uses the following spam filters verdicts to classify the messages. Spam confidence level of 5 or 6, high confidence spam of 7, 8 or 9, phishing, high confidence, phishing, bulk. Alright, so let me just quickly log on to the portal and take it from there. Alright, I am logged on to the portal. So, to reach to the anti-spam policies, you first log on to security.microsoft.com. When you are at the home screen, you will scroll down to email and collaboration. Then you will click on policies and rules. Then you will click on threat policies. Then you will see anti-spam policies. Let it load. Make sure that you have the necessary permissions configured to reach at this page on Defender Portal. You can configure them using Microsoft Defender XDR Unified RBAC Control, Exchange Online Permissions or Microsoft Entra Permissions. Click on Create Policy to create an inbound or an outbound. So you will we'll create an inbound from the drop-down. You will name the policy description. You can add the same description. Include these users, groups and domains. So when you will select users, the specified mailboxes, mail users, mail contacts or mail enabled public folders. Okay, I'll click on my name just to demo the procedure. Then you mention, you can mention the groups, you can mention the domains. And if you want to exclude these users, groups and domains, you can mention those users as well after checking this box. If not, we'll click on next. On the bulk email and on the back screen, if I show you, you can also for, uh, you can use a condition only once, but the condition can, can, can contain multiple values. Multiple values of the same condition, you use or logic, for example, recipient 1 or recipient 2, if the recipient matches any of the specified values and the policy is applied to them. Okay, on this screen, in the bulk email threshold, so the slider specifies the bulk compliant level or the BCL of a message that must be met or exceeded to trigger the specified action for the bulk compliant level met or exceeded. So, if you will see the information mark here bcl can be from one to nine a lower value indicates bending in bulk email like newsletters ads you signed up for mails from known good bulk sender a high value indicates the bulk messages is bad likely unwanted or more spam like so we can go with the default value you can increase it to eight or nine then you can look at spam properties increase spam score or mark as spam and test mode, advanced spam filter, which is ASF settings that are turned off by default. Okay, you can turn them on or make them in the test mode as per your requirement. Mark the spam embedded tags in HTML, JavaScript, uh, form tags, frame or iframe tags, web bugs, object tags, SPF heart fail, back setter. Backscatter contains specific languages and the test mode as well. So when you're finished on the bulk email threshold and spam properties page, so the contains specific language and from these countries, these settings are not part of ASF, which is advanced spam filter settings. You will have to look at each and every setting to enable them or to change them. Okay, when you will come on the next screen on the actions tab, you need to review or select the action to take on messages based on the spam filtering verdicts. You want to move it 
on the spam, high confidence spam, phishing, high confidence phishing, or uh, the bulk complaint complaint level or met or exceeded. Now this is the allowed and block list. When you are in the allowed and block list page, you can configure message senders by email address or email domain who are allowed to skip scam spam filtering in the allowed section you can configure allowed senders and allowed domains in the blocked section you can add block senders and block domains and then you can review the policy details and as said before you can increase the priority of a policy you can turn or turn turn on or turn off the custom policies you can delete the policy or you can status on or you can set it to always on if you do this priority lower the next policy edit the description and you can edit from here as well lowest priority lowest priority always on you can make changes as well and if you can want to use powershell to create anti-spam policies or modify or create a spam filter rule or you want to view the spam filter policies the same can be done using the powershell commands as well I hope this was informative for all of you. If you have any further questions, please mention them in the comment section. And I will see you guys in the next video. Thank you. Have a good day.